uh, somebody like Warner Brothers, they can absorb something like that. Right. But that small studio had spent a lot of money. I mean, to them, that was a lot of money to put a tour together for him. Right. And, um, and the fact that um, uh, Kimberly, welcome to Dallas. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you here and uh, for me to be able to congratulate you on not only the movie, but your performance in it. Thanks. I sat there last night watching the film, knowing that it was your first film, and here you are, the star, Father of the Bride, you know, <laughs> titled yet. You're working with Steve Martin and Diane Keaton, and you're up there performing on such a high level. And obviously, it speaks to your talent, but there might be other young women who would have been talented also who couldn't have competed on that level. So my question is, how were you able to compete on such a high level? Well, fortunately, when I auditioned, I didn't know that over 500 women had auditioned for this part. I only saw four people in the waiting room, so I wasn't as intimidated as I probably would have been if I had known the truth. So I just kind of waltzed in there and um, just had fun with the audition. I didn't really think I was right for it, actually. Um, because I'm 20 years old and, and a lot of people tell me that I look younger than 20 and this was for the part of a 22 year old. So I thought, well, you know, I might as well just go in and meet someone in Chicago and have a good time. So I think that's what I did and probably um, my performance was better because I wasn't as nervous. Um, also, uh, Annie Banks' character is a lot like me um, in that she has the same values. She's close with her family. She's friends with her dad. And I've, I've always been close with my fr family. And uh, my dad and I have always been close. So I drew a lot on my instincts uh, from my personal life for the part. Had you seen the original Father of the Bride? No, I hadn't seen it. Um, as a matter of fact, when I heard about the audition, I don't think I'd even heard of Father of the Bride. Um, after the shooting was over, though, I went, I went out and rented it and sat on my couch at home and watched the whole movie. What uh, did you think? Um, I liked it. I thought Spencer Tracy was really funny, um, but it also hit me how different the two movies are. Um, I think our movie's just very updated, obviously. I mean, that one was a, a product of the 50s and ours is of the 90s. Um, you know, like I can't see Elizabeth Taylor, for example, going out and playing basketball in a dress with her dad, you know? Um, just small differences like that. Someday you'll have a wedding, I'm sure. Won't your own wedding, however marvelous it is, won't it seem sort of anticlimactic after this big, splashy wedding? Well, it would be very climactic because there was no, um, there was no gr real groom for me in this wedding, you know? <laughs> it was like, I walked down, I got married about 30 times. I walked down the aisle over and over and over, recited my vows, and then there was no honeymoon. <laughs> they didn't pay for the honeymoon. <laughs> and we stopped shooting just before we got to Hawaii, so. Um, no, I think it'll be great. Um, I probably won't get married for another 10 years or so. I mean, it's not gonna happen for a long time. Is there a special guy in your life? Not right now. Um, I'm just, you know, not dating anyone seriously right now. When you get married, do you think that you'd like a big, splashy wedding like that? If I were to get married tomorrow, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think I got the big, splashy wedding out of my system. If I were to get married, um, you know, five or six or seven years down the road, maybe I'll want it all over again. Who knows? I'll know how to do it now. I'll just watch the tape and go, oh, yeah, that's right, okay. I feel like I've been through a wedding rehearsal already. Would you use a wedding coordinator? Mm. Um, I don't know if I'd use a wedding coordinator. I doubt my wedding will be as expensive and extravagant as, as this one was. This was the perfect glamorous wedding. Martin Short, of course, is just fabulous in that role. Uh, the accent and everything that he uses, was that something he just brought into the part or did that evolve or what? That evolved, <laughs> definitely. Um, they wrote in some sort of accent in the script, um, and then Martin Short came in and said, well, how about if I do this? And he started, and for the, we had like a week um, before shooting when I saw, I saw him only like once or twice, and he would just come in and say, well, how about this? And he'd, he'd say a few lines of Franck, and slowly Franck started to evolve. Okay. 
Your wedding dress in the movie is just outstanding. Was it by a special designer? Yeah, Susan Becker is the costume designer, and she worked really hard on making that dress perfect. Um, and then she took it to um, Renee Strauss in um, California, and Renee made it, and they custom made it. So it fits me. So I was kind of hoping they'd give it to me, but <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you'll know to write that in your contract. Yeah, right. <laughs> How would you describe the dress to someone? Um, well, it's got a satin bodice that comes down here and, and it's fitting, and then the skirt that goes out, the dress that goes out. Um, it's very full, beautiful satin, very soft, and chantilly lace, which I learned you have to say chantilly lace because it's like, oh, it's something like holy almost the way they talked about it. <laughs> it's like very delicate lace. The sleeves are made of lace so you can see through my skin um, and the sleeves and up here in my chest. Did you have anything to say about the design of the dress? No. Mm -mm. Um, I, I just went in for the fittings and stood there <laughs> and let them poke at me. And they just had the one? That one dress, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was too expensive to make a, do a double. What was the value of it, do you know? Uh, I think it was about mm, over, yeah, I think it was a little over 5000 It looks it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a really gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. gown. They dyed the lace with coffee. Isn't that interesting? To make it slightly off-white, they dyed it with coffee. Well, you could have done that yourself, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I would have botched that up. <laughs> Do you have any other films coming along? Not right now. Right now I'm, I'm in school and um, studying, taking classes again, and that's, that's where I'm going to stay for now unless something you know, comes up that's as great as Father of the Ride. How, how did your relationship with Steve evolve? Uh, did you become very good friends with him? or? Oh, yeah, we were friends. Um, I, I, they'd take me out to lunch every day. Steve Martin and Diane Keaton would take me out to lunch almost every day. Um, and I'd go into their trailers and hang out with them. And um, Steve and I would play basketball because, you know, we knew we, we had this scene towards the end of the shoot where we would have to um, play basketball. Um, so we'd play the game called Horse, you know, where you try to make it and then you, you just go around. And Anyways, um, he always beat me. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, and I played poker with them. I watched them play poker, and we just we weren't like very close friends, but we became friends. Had you played basketball before? No. You mm -hmm. do very well. I mean, you look pretty sharp out there. Well, thank you. The I started, dribbling and all. Yeah, I started practicing as soon as I got on the set. They gave me a, a basketball coach, and. Um, pair of high tops so I could feel like I was in the groove and um, <clears throat> basketballs and um, I worked every day and worked on the weekends and stuff. I really worked hard at it. Well Kimberly again congratulations. The picture I think should do very well. It's Thanks highly so entertaining. Good. And uh, your performance is just outstanding. Thanks. And we look forward to having you back in Dallas one of these times. Okay. <laughs> Science and health. Uh -huh longevity and omnis type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he used to work for Newsday. <gasps> I had a little stress though. But I know, I lost a little stress. There's somewhere, I can't remember where. This is not alcohol, you swear. I'm not saying mm -hmm. I got hooked on it. No, I didn't. What is it? It's ginseng. It's a, oh, it's a yeah. Root. What is it? <coughs> it's a root or something? It tastes like all the The hairdresser it. on the shoot kept giving me these things and it helped me. Here you are in your very first film role. You're with Steve Martin and Diane Keaton, and you're just up there competing on such a high level with them. How were you able to do that? Well, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, when you have your own wedding, won't it be sort of anticlimactic? Here you had this big, splashy Hollywood movie wedding. Actually, I think it'll be very climactic. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, Try to oh, stay away okay. How would you ex how would you describe the wedding dress you wear? Oh, it's beautiful. It's um, like this. Mm -hmm. 
this and this and you know it's great we died in coffee <laughs> okay just keep talking now it doesn't matter what you talk okay, about okay um so are you a drama major i'm a performance studies major um, which is kind of like um we study um, literature through performance, so like, you know, um, Grapes of Wrath on Broadway, Frank Galati took the novel Grapes of Wrath and um, adapted it. Frank Galati's a professor at Northwestern, so uh -huh. that's kind of like typical performance studies. Yeah. Um, how, how did the kids treat you now that you're back in school and well, big Hollywood star now. Um, a lot of my friends are very cool about it. Some of my friends, I have like new friends, you know, um, that have never, who've never talked to me before until I got the movie. Um, 